The UN Foundation has a project called Girl Up. Tell us all about that. Yeah. So Girl Up is a foundation. It's focused on adolescent girls. And we provide enabling environment to help adolescent girls become all they can be. We work with the United Nations, and they have certain programs that they want to do. The foundation raises funds that enables the United Nations to carry out the missions that they would like to do. As, as the father of an adolescent girl, if you can just show her how to get the phone out of her hands, that would be one of the best <laughs> things ever. But you know, the, the, the issue of cell phones is everywhere across the world, isn't yeah, it? It is. It is. You know, and it's not just the girls that we have to worry about with the cell phones. <laughs> it's adults. It's everyone. See, information consumes our attention. And oftentimes, we find ourselves unable to be physically and emotionally present in a moment because we are distracted by our cell phones, etc. And we are sub-optimizing ourselves because we are not focused on the present moment. And um, I think the adults could first start mm -hmm. by being a role model to young girls to ensure that they understand that there is a time and place for everything. And when they're focused on things that don't matter, then they will not move towards their success. Hmm. You moved from the technology world to the UN Foundation. Why? I did. So, you know, as a vice president of IBM, as one of the highest level women of color executive, I had the opportunity to participate in many meetings. We would go to the nation's capital, we would go to the White House, and we would talk about the lack of women in the C-suite and in leadership roles in information technology. And all that was very good. However, having been in sales my entire life, I thought that everything starts with a pipeline. Everything starts with opportunities. You nurture those opportunities and then you close the deals. And when we talk about the women that are already in leadership positions, and then one company goes and hires another woman, they haven't really lifted anything, they just shifted the numbers. And so I got to a point where I just said, just talking about the numbers is not really helping. If I could focus my attention on adolescent girls, this is what I call our pipeline. Mm -hmm. Pipeline of women of all color, and get engaged in accelerating their success, whether it is through the UN Foundation, or I am also on a board of an organization here locally in Seattle. It's called Young Women Empowered. And we provide leadership skills to these young girls to step up as leaders in their communities. These women are first generation immigrants. They are refugees. They're the first people obtaining a college degree. I was one of them. I was the first person in my family to obtain a college degree. And I see me in them, and I feel that if I can share my lessons learned with these young girls, then they, when they go into the corporate world, they will step up as leaders and they will become senior executives. So I'm very motivated to work with the younger women to provide them the leadership skills, the lessons that I have learned, so they can change the statistics that we are so focused on discussing today. And here at this conference, they're focusing often on developing countries. Yes. Do young girls, adolescent girls in developing countries have dreams of being in a corporate world? Oh my God, yes. You know, girls everywhere have similar dreams. If we were to truly understand these girls, regardless of where they are, they want a happy life. They want a fulfilled life. They want the opportunity to realize their maximum potential. We in the US are very lucky because we have the opportunities. And I am so pleased to be here because the organizations here are focused on creating opportunities for the girls worldwide so they can be all they can be. Can they get there? And, and the reason that I ask that is because I've traveled in a, in a lot of countries. Uh, many of them are developing countries. And the problem sometimes seems overwhelming. Yeah. But at the same point in time, then I see one girl with a smile like that. Yes. 
with an, uh, with a laptop computer or an iPad on her. Yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, yeah. And I say, well, maybe maybe they just can do it. Yes, they can. I will tell you they can because look at me. I am a living example. If you would have met me 45 years ago, you would have thought I'm one of those underprivileged kids in Tanzania. I was, as I said, four brothers and sisters in one bedroom. Anyone from the US would have called me underprivileged, but I didn't think so. Look at the smiles on these kids. They're not underprivileged. They're happy. And yes, they can get there. It's the opportunity that is lacking. And if we can step up to provide them with the opportunity, they will step up with what they can deliver to that opportunity. So yes, the problem is big. Yes, it is overwhelming. But can we do this? I firmly believe we can. The Millennium Development Goals have changed because the first 10 years are, are done and so now it's moving more into development, but it's development for the sake of alleviating poverty yes. and all of the other ills that come with poverty. Yes. The key question, though, again, as I look in other developing countries, is oftentimes it's male-dominated yeah. and they don't want to give up power. I know. And we're talking about girls with incredible potential I know. who would take some of their power. Can that happen? You know, it's, it can happen. First, we have to start with the belief that it can happen. Okay. Once we believe it can happen, and we have that conviction and that clarity, we can then move along the journey of making it happen. There's going to be many obstacles along the way. Some of the obstacles are created within the countries themselves. And so we have to work within the country. We have to understand. We have to educate the men as well as the women to show them that when we all rise, everybody rises together. We create this rising tide that lifts all boats. When their women are educated, they will take that to their children, to their families, to their communities, to the world at large. And so a lot of what is happening, in my opinion, is just because of lack of understanding. I do not believe that these men get up every morning saying, how do I suppress my women? I believe they do it because that is what has been happening for so long and that they don't know of a better way. And that if we were just to create awareness and to provide opportunities, this could change. Let's look ahead three to five years. The UN Foundation and the, the Girl Up program, where are you gonna be? Where am I going to be? It's not about where I am going to be. It's really about where the girls are going to be. Okay. What I want to do is I want to enable the girls become all they can be. So currently, one of the programs that I am most interested in with Girl Up is to provide education to refugee girls in Uganda. Now, I was born in Tanzania, and Uganda is my neighboring country. Mm -hmm. Uganda has opened up its borders to not just refugees from the Congo Republic, from Sudan, from the, they have opened up their borders. But Uganda does not have the kind of resources that are required to provide the education that the girls need so they can have smiles and iPad. And so when they are placed in another country two, three years down the road, they haven't lost two or three years. And so what the United Nations does, which is so inspiring for me and energizing for me is we, the U United Nations High Commissioner for Refugee works with us. We provide the money to United Nations so these girls can wake up. They can put on a school uniform. They have the supplies so they can forget for a moment about being a refugee, but they can focus on themselves and how can they better their lives. And in two years when they end up somewhere, they can start at the school level where they should be starting. You see, otherwise, if they came to Bellevue, Washington, and they're 12 years old, but they haven't been to school since they were eight, they have failed before they even got a chance to play. And so I get very excited about the opportunity. And um, this, this holiday season, I created a fundraising page for myself on, on uh, Giving Tuesday, 
I raised over $5,000 in just one day, and $25, $25 pays for one child. So 200 girls are going to be wearing the uniform proudly because of my friends and my family that donated. Wow, you are a giant for sure. Thank you. Shalmina, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, thank you, and God bless you for doing what you do.